and welcome to our Early Years Induction video. We are so pleased you have chosen William Gilbert School. We are looking forward to meeting you and your children and to welcome them into our school. The purpose of this video is to give you some of the essential information that you will need before September and before your child starts school. I will introduce you to the team during this meeting. My name is Helen Britton and I am the Deputy Head and I work very closely with the Early Years team as the Early Years Leader. A warm welcome to children, parents and carers joining us in September. My name is Sue Wilde and I am the Head Teacher here at William Gilbert Endowed Church of England Primary School which is part of Derby Diocese Academy Trust. It is my role to make sure your children have a flying start to their school career, as it is the beginning of a journey which will continue through the next seven years here at William Gilbert. We want your child to feel safe and happy and for them to be excited and motivated to engage with a variety of fun learning experiences. As parents and carers, you are your child's first educators and you bring a wealth of knowledge about how your child learns, what they like, what feels tricky and maybe what they are unsure of. You will know what makes them smile and laugh too. Working in partnership between home and school, we can help your child be successful. Parents and carers may be anxious, while others are counting down the days. Some children will be raring to go for September. Some may be more uncertain, and that is quite normal. The Early Years team have a wealth of experience and time to listen to your thoughts so that they can make your time here positive. And as the head teacher, I offer you my assurance that you can safely entrust your child into our care. One of my favourite jobs is to lead the music in our school and so across the years I will enjoy singing and performing with your children. Life at school is super exciting and I am really looking forward to meeting you all. Gilbert School we see all children as individuals and we educate the whole child. We aim to make learning as irresistible as possible and I hope as you watch this video you will get a flavour of this. A key to success at William Gilbert School is for us to work in close partnership with yourselves the parents and carers. You know your children best, you know what makes them tick, you know what they love and how they learn best. By working together, we can share the learning that takes place in school so that you can build on this at home. This gets children off to a really good start and be successful in their learning journey. So today, we are going to talk about what to expect when your child starts school in September and in the early days. We'll explain a little bit about the Early Years Foundation Stage curriculum, what that means, and what that looks like in practice at William Gilbert School. We'll talk you through a typical day so that you understand the routines and the pattern of a day. We'll talk about lunch times and the options that are available there to you. We'll also explain a little bit about the school uniform and the equipment that the children will need when they start school. We're going to talk about the induction arrangements. Now, these plans are subject to change. We have a plan A, and a plan B, but all will be explained as we progress through the meeting. We'll also talk about how you could support your child to have the best start in school. We'll give you some ideas of things that you could be doing even now to get them used to the idea of coming to school, so that when they do start school, they do so feeling really confident. 
we're going to explain what to do if you have any further questions. Usually in our induction meetings, where they are face to face, you'd have that opportunity to ask questions. But at this time, where we cannot do this at the moment, we'll explain to you the different options that are available to you for communicating with us. We would really like to hear from you, to hear your questions or any of your worries or concerns and to share those with us. So I hope you enjoy watching the meeting. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Miss Whiten, I'm the class teacher in reception. I'm going to talk to you about what to expect in the first few days. In the early days, we are going to provide your ch children with lots of opportunities to get to know us, to get to know their environment and to get to know our daily routine. We are planning to do this through small groups. We will use observational assessment. So what does that mean? That basically means we're going to watch, play, listen and observe your children in activities through the day. This lets us know where they are up to in their learning. It gives us a clear picture of where they are learning and how we can plan their next steps to help them move on. The early years curriculum is made up of seven different areas of learning, communication and language, personal, social and emotional development, literacy, mathematics, understanding the world, which includes history, geography, science and technology, and expressive arts and design. We'll need to observe your children. Are your children willing to have a go? Are they involved and concentrating during tasks? Do they have their own ideas? Do they choose for themselves? Do they find ways to do things? Do they find new ways to do things? And very importantly, do they enjoy achieving what they set out to do? Miss Whiting has told us a little bit about the early years foundation stage curriculum and the different elements that support children's learning. Our approach to curriculum design is a creative one that provides pupils with memorable, engaging learning experiences that transcend cultural boundaries to empower and equip them for today and the future. It is based on what we know about your children, what their interests are and based on our topics. We follow the principles of child development, learning through play. Learning opportunities provide a balance between child initiated learning, small group learning and adult directed learning. In the autumn term we shall have an early years curriculum meeting which will explain our approach to the curriculum in more detail along with the expectations for the end of the reception year. about reading. In school we teach children the skills they need to learn to read. In the autumn term we will have a phonics workshop where we'll talk to you about what phonics is and how we teach reading at William Gilbert School along with how you can help your child to grasp this important skill. We teach the skills in school and we do some practice but we really need your help to embed these skills through daily practice at home and this is absolutely key to success in learning to read. I've got some examples of the books that we'll send home to the children and this is one of the first sorts of books we'll send home and as you notice as I open the book there, there aren't any words and what we want children to do with these books is begin to talk about the pictures and to be able to describe what they can see and to retell the story using the pictures to help them. We encourage them to use full sentences. You can support your child by talking about the pictures and naming things that can be seen, which will develop their vocabulary. And this is a really important skill to retell a story using the picture. At the same time as the picture book's coming home, we will begin our formal teaching of phonics in school. We'll have our phonics workshop, so you'll know exactly how to support your child at home as we begin to learn to read. Once the children have begun to learn their sounds, we'll begin to send books home that look like this. And these books will have words in them. And they'll still be able to tell the story using the pictures, but they'll begin to spot words and sounds that they've learnt in school. 
at different parts of the book, there may be a focus on the sound they've learned. So for example, in this picture, um, they're looking at the sound. So you can talk to your child about the things in the picture that you can see that begin with. So we've got peppers, peaches, pizza, pie, parasol, and you can talk about some of those more complex words that they perhaps not have seen or understand what they mean. Once children begin to recognise several sounds and begin to blend these uh, sounds together, they can begin to read words by saying the sounds they've learned. S it, sit, 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 sit. We'll also send home tricky words at this time as well. And these will come home on little tricky word trucks in a little bag in their book bag for them to begin to learn those tricky words. Words that cannot be sounded out and have to be learned off by heart. But as they begin to read um, these books, daily practice is really important and it's vital to help them to learn to read. As they progress through the year, they'll begin to get more complex texts that look like this and by the end of the year they'll be reading books like this. Open these books you can see there are still pictures for the children to look at and enjoy and to talk about and to use to retell the story but on each page there is a sentence for them to read sometimes two sometimes three sentences for them to apply the phonics they've learnt and to decode these words and where there are any tricky words that they will have learnt these off by heart and read them on sight. Now, the key really is practice. The more you practice, the more your child will feel successful and confident with reading. If your child read to you just once a week, this is how many books they will have read by the end of the year. However, if your child reads every school day with you, this is how many books they will have read by the end of the year. You can really see the difference, can't you? Now, reading opens up the rest of the curriculum in school, and we really do encourage you to hear your child read every day so that they are a successful reader and successful in all aspects of their learning across the curriculum. As practicing the skills associated with learning to read at home, we strongly encourage your children to read widely and to read for pleasure. I'm sat in our school library and the children can access this and take home books to share with you at home. It really is important that you continue to have bedtime stories and to share books with your child at these special times. They can take books from the library, visit your local library, read comics, whatever types of books they enjoy reading. It's absolutely key. We want children to love reading. We want them to be able to curl up with a book and escape to different worlds in a book. We want them to love reading and to love learning. day in reception. No two days are the same, which is what makes it fun and exciting. Here is our typical day. The children will come into school and put away their book bags. Then they will have a morning activity, which to begin with it will be to trace over their names. Then we do the register and go straight into our phonics session. After phonics, we will usually do a short physical development session such as flipper flappers or do disco to allow the children to, to develop muscles and control and the control they need for writing. The children love this activity as they do it to music and they love flipping and flapping around. This is followed by a short English session where we share stories, develop our speaking and listening skills and as the year goes on our writing and reading skills before moving on to our first child initiated session of the day when children have the opportunity to direct their own learning through play that they choose. At this time the adult's role is the facilitator. We observe, play 
and, some, and sometimes play alongside, drop ideas or, or a question in as a suggestion. They may offer resources based on what they observe in the moment or for the next session. We will model language skills in order to support their next steps in their learning across all the areas of learning. During the morning routine, we have fresh fruit and water available to the children all morning. We have milk provided at lunchtime up until the age of five. So what the children will do is if they want their snack during the morning, they will come over to this area, they will choose their snack and then they will find their picture and they will put it in the basket. This lets the adults know who's had snack and who hasn't. After tidy up time, it is worship time and lunch time. At lunch time, the children have the option of a nutritious hot meal, which is made on site by our school cooks daily. There is always a meat option and a vegetarian option. If you would prefer, children can bring their own packed lunches from home. Menus are available on our school website and from the school office so that you can help your child select a meal they would like each day. time we move on to a short daily math session which is fun and practical. We have another session of child initiated learning as well as stories and songs. During the week the children will have a PE slot with one of our PE coaches and we will visit the school library. We also spend lots of time outside in our mud kitchen, our nature garden, our pond area and our learning balcony. to introduce you to some of the people that help us in school. Hello everybody, I'm Miss Day and I'm the Early Years Teaching Assistant in Reception. Hope to see you all soon and have a lovely summer holidays. Bye! Hello, my name is Emily Davies and I'm the Senko here at William Gilbert School, which means I'm the Special Educational Needs Coordinator. I help to support and identify children who may have difficulties within their learning and I work closely with their class teacher and TAs to support the provision within the classroom. This includes monitoring planning, looking at intervention and resources that may support any barriers to learning. I work with different outside agencies such as speech and language therapists, physiotherapists and educational psychologists to name just a few. If your child is already working with an outside agency, please let the school know so that we can plan a smooth transition for your child. If we feel the need to seek any advice from an outside agency, we will of course talk to you first. If you have any concerns regarding your child or any family history that you would like to share with us, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me. If you would like any further information on the SEND provision that we have in school, please take a look at our website where we have our SEND information report and our policy that will give you further information. Hello everybody, my name's Liz Shepherd and I'm the Chair of Governors at William Gilbert School. The governing body are here to represent everybody who has an interest in the school and we're going to be here for you. We support the head teacher but we don't manage any of the day-to-day -day running of the school. We have to fulfil some statutory duties and we help in the strategic planning. Our team is divided into three subcommittees. The Finance Committee is here to help to manage the budget. They ensure that the money is spent effectively and they take responsibility for the maintenance of the buildings. The Personnel Committee are responsible for recruitment, for staffing issues, grievances and admissions and the Standards Committee monitor the learning throughout the school. They ensure that your children are going to make good progress and they also oversee the attendance, behaviour and welfare of the children. Every Governor is linked to a subject or to an area of the curriculum and they're able to see the teaching of that subject throughout each year group. 
I try to be in school as much as possible and I enjoy talking and listening to the children and I'm really looking forward to meeting your children in September. All of the governors will be pleased to chat with you or to answer any questions that you may have for them, so please do approach us. You'll find our pictures and our details on the school website and I look forward to seeing you in September. Hello, my name is Rachel Manners and I'm the school business manager at William Gilbert School. I'll be your first port of contact at the school office and can help with any queries or questions that you may have. I can be contacted on the main school number or by email, which you can see at the bottom of your screen. If your child is poorly, we ask that parents telephone the school office and leave a message on the answer phone. When your child returns to school following the illness, we ask that you confirm the reason for absence in writing. I look forward to meeting all new parents in September, but in the meantime, do not hesitate to contact me either via the phone or email if you've got any queries. Thank you. Full details of our school uniform, as pictured here, are available in the new starters booklet and on the school website. School jumpers, cardigans, PE tops, fleeces, school ties and school book bags are available to purchase using the school's online payment system Scopay. Details on how to register with this service will be provided once you have completed the online new starter form. Further details are available via the school office regarding this form. Children will also need a suitable coat for all seasons as we spend time learning outside whatever the weather. Children will also need a black pair of school shoes. No boots, sandals or trainers please. We urge you to label all items of clothing. It is very difficult to reunite lost items to their owners without names. In getting your child ready for coming to school, we've got a few top tips for you. Firstly, playing games with your child. When they come into reception, they'll need to be able to experience sharing, taking turns, listening to each other. So taking time to play games with your child will be really useful. Getting them to experience not only winning a game, but experience the disappointment when they don't win. Games such as dominoes, pairs, games, board games that you have at home would be great practice for them. The second top tip would be to help them learn to get dressed and undressed independently. We have a uniform that has buttons and a tie. But please don't worry about that. We will help them with their buttons and their ties when they come into school. What we would like them to do is to be able to perhaps put their coat on and to be able to zip it up. The children spend an awful lot of time coming in and out, learning both inside and outside. And if they can do their coat upon their own, it really does help us. Um, as well as being able to put their cardigan on or their jumper on, to be able to pull it inside out and put it the right way again so that they can do that independently. And that just frees up a bit of time for us and also makes them feel that bit more independent and be able to get out and play and do what the other children are doing rather than waiting for the adult to be able to help them do it for them. Another top tip would be to be talking to your children at meal time, during the day, talking about what you're doing, having that to and fro conversation so that they're used to taking in turns and listening to other people without interrupting will be a really useful skill to practice before coming to school. And also my final top tip would be story times. Those bedtime stories are really crucial and really valuable and really special times. If you can spend time each night reading a bedtime story to your child, it does really help with their listening skills, develops their language, their vocabulary, and also their love of learning, their love of literature. Now, normally at this time of year, we would have several in-school transition visits and they're valuable sessions for children to help them feel confident about the setting, the routines and coming to school and getting to know the adults in school. But at the moment we're not able to do that. If there comes a point that we are, we will let you know. But what we are doing is planning to ease the children into school in September gradually and on a part-time basis first of all. And this will allow us to provide those crucial induction sessions prior to them starting school full-time. 
Prior to that though, we will offer some um, virtual induction sessions which we will post on our website. We will be recording three sessions with stories, rhymes and crafts. If you are worrying that you may not have these resources, then please don't. We will be providing everything you need in the packs. Each child will have a pack that is named and will be available from, to collect from the front of the school building on Thursday the 2nd of July. Ready for the first session on Friday the 3rd of July. Each, se each session will be available every Friday up until the end of term. Don't let your child loose on the packs. Wait for session one to be posted and then open the pack to join in with the team. That's about it from us for today. When we know more about what is possible regarding transition sessions and plans for September, then we will be in touch. Keep watching to the end of this presentation video as there's more photos of our setting and the exciting learning that takes place within it. Please stay in touch with us. You can get in touch via our email, which is posted at the bottom of the screen. We look forward to seeing any of your pictures, any emails or any questions you may have. And you can access us via that email and we can try our best to answer your questions but we'd also love to see any work that the children do as a response to our virtual induction sessions that will be posted each Friday. So we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye, Bye for now! now.